Hey, and welcome back to the channel. And today I want to talk about one of the biggest parts of radiology school, and that is clinicals. Now, this is where you're out of the classroom and actually working in a hospital or clinic setting. And here's the thing. Clinicals are basically a two year job interview. And yes, you heard that right. A two year job interview. How you show up, how you act and how you work with others can actually determine how quickly you land a job after graduation or even before. So let's go over how to not only survive clinicals, but to thrive in them. First and foremost, show up on time. If you are a habitually late type of person in general, change that today. This is a professional setting, so act professional and be on time. Wear clean scrubs, look presentable, and just be ready to learn. Remember, treat every clinical day as if you're already on the payroll because you're basically being evaluated as a potential future coworker. Clinicals aren't just about learning x-ray techniques. They're about learning how to be a part of a healthcare team. If you see a tech moving a patient, offer to help. Or if you see that a table needs wiped down, clean it without being asked. Or if you aren't busy, try to stock supplies. It might be small, but these little tasks go a long way in showing that you're reliable, dependable, and that you actually care. The techs can pick up pretty quickly who's an asset to the team and who is not. The techs notice when you are eager to learn versus when you're just standing around or even trying to hide from work. So do yourself a favor and show initiative. Ask if you can set up the room, grab the patient, or help position. Even if you don't get it perfect, the effort speaks volumes. These techs are literally evaluating you as future coworkers, and they will hold spots for um, students that they really like. At my current hospital, we are holding a spot for like four months for a tech that hasn't even, or a student that hasn't even graduated yet. And this happened when I was in school. When I was in school, they held two or three jobs for us students that were like still four or five months out from graduation that they wouldn't even look at other people outside of the hospital because they knew that they wanted us to be a part of the team. And that's why it is so important to treat clinicals like that to your interview, because if you like your hospital facility that you're at at clinicals and you plan on staying in that area, then this is your job. And when you have a job lined up three, four, five months before you even graduated, that takes all that stress away and you can just focus on your boards and graduate and then boom, like you're set to go. All right, so here's one of the biggest things that I've learned in clinicals, and that is every tech has their own style. You'll see exams and positioning techniques done multiple different ways depending on who you're working with, and that's okay. What you don't want to say is, well, so-and-so does it this way. No, don't say that. That just creates drama, and the last thing you want to do is create drama in the clinical setting as a student. So um, instead, just adapt to that technologist, learn the techniques and how they do it that way, and just take mental notes. If you're working with a tech who likes things done a specific way, just adapt and do them that way with that tech. The next day, if you are working with another tech that does it a completely different way, just adapt and do it their way. Um, it's honestly, one, it's so good to see things done multiple different ways because once you eventually are a technologist yourself, you are going to love having all these tools in your toolbox and just kind of think back like, oh, I remember a tech position this way or I remember they did it this way. And two, it also just helps kind of feel and like see what works and what doesn't, what is efficient and what's not. And um, I remember in school working with techs, like seeing them do techniques some ways. And I would just be like, I don't know if this makes the most, most sense. And then I'd work with another tech and they would do something that I'd never seen. And I'm like, this is insane. Like, this is such a good way to get this exam. And um, you kind of just build your toolbox. And once you become a technologist, you just pick and choose which techniques work the best for you. So again, over time, you'll start piecing together what works best for you. And trust me, being flexible and being able to adapt will take you so far in your career, especially if you ever want to become a travel radiologic technologist. Now let's talk about competencies, because this is a section that a lot of students stress out about. In your program, you will have a specific amount of competencies or sign-offs that you will have to complete before graduation to be eligible to sit for the boards. You will fail comps in the clinical setting, and that is okay because it's just all part of the learning experience. Now, don't get this confused with failing tests or quizzes in school. This is completely different. Um, failing competencies in the clinical setting just means you didn't get the sign off, you didn't earn the competency, and you have to try again on the next patient you see. Um, failing quizzes and tests in school, those are your actual grades, so don't ever fail those. But in the clinical setting, you will fail competencies. It just happens. It can be for anything, whether that be you mispositioned the patient and you clipped a piece of the anatomy or you used 
the wrong marker or you forgot to use a marker or use the wrong technique. It could be anything. And these are things that you'll learn um, once you do start school. Like you might have forgot to line up the tube in the bucky and you just missed shot and you have to do a repeat. So things like that, which again, you will learn during school. The main thing is to keep practicing and positioning patients because repetition is how you get better. And also keep in mind, there are going to be some exams that are just very rare. Um, they'll probably be elective exams, but they might be like skull or facial bones or whatever, some special views that you might only see once or twice in the program. You might not even see some of them at all. So if you have already learned these positions and you see something come up in the clinical setting, jump on it because this is your time to get it. Even if you don't feel confident, some of the techs might not even feel confident because some exams we don't see for eight months to a year at a time. And then we have to like kind of go back and look in our quick notes, like how to position these things. Cause you just don't see them often. So um, if that happens to you and you're a student, just jump on it, look at your notes real quick and go for it or talk it over with the tech because they'll help you as well. Being able to knock off some of these rare elective um, competencies will definitely move you forward and closer to graduation when you need to have a certain amount of competencies to be eligible to graduate and sit for the boards. And eventually you'll be going to surgery as a student. And that is like a super cool thing that x-ray techs do. We get to work in surgery with this big um, piece of equipment called a C-arm. It's usually in your second year that you end up going to surgery. And a lot of technologists or a lot of students going in at times to surgery are very nervous and very scared because you are maneuvering this huge machine around a sterile field. And you haven't really been around sterile fields like that before either. So, um, my biggest thing, my biggest takeaway is when I was a student, I didn't get up there enough and I didn't really feel comfortable in surgery. And once I started as an x-ray tech, I kind of just got thrown in there and it was a lot harder because I wasn't very comfortable as a student. I didn't get as many reps as I probably should have. So if you're a student, try to get as comfortable as you can in surgery. Try to handle that C-arm as much as you can, position it. AP lateral, that sort of thing that you'll learn eventually when you start school, because once you graduate, you will feel so much comfortable and confident in surgery. And um, surgery is a great place to be. There are a lot of technologists that don't love going to surgery because they just don't like working with surgeons. They're afraid of working with the equipment, usually because you just haven't worked with it enough. But trust me, if you're confident with that equipment, you can work literally anywhere in the country. So long story short, ask all the questions, play with the equipment, and start to get comfortable around the sterile field. All right, moving on now. Good communication goes a long way. Know when to ask questions and when to hold off. If a tech is with a difficult patient or you're in the middle of a trauma or the ER is just slammed, just hold off, take a mental note of the questions that you're waiting to ask and just wait till it calms down a little bit until the tech has a break and then discuss those questions. If you see the tech is struggling, try to help rather than be in the way. As a tech, there are times when patients are just in so much pain or just can't cooperate to begin with, and we need to get the exam done as soon as possible, and that just means us going to position the patient rather than having the student trying to like mess around and figure things out. So in that case, it's good for the students to just kind of watch and observe, and then afterwards, what I can do is I can discuss my method of how um, I position and what I did to um, get the patient to cooperate, or at least um, how I angled the tube to get these images without having to reposition the patient at all because they're in a lot of pain. So things like that. So just try to um, understand that perspective as a student. Don't just jump into everything. If there are patients that are really tough, just uh, you can help out the tech, but let them kind of take over, let them take the lead. And then you can learn from that, observe from that and ask questions after. Basically just feel out the situations and go with the flow. And don't be afraid to ask for clarification when you need it. Um, techs would much rather teach and explain things than have you make the same mistake over and over. This section is short, but like I said earlier, treat clinicals like a two-year job interview. Hospitals often hire from their own student pool because they already know you, you know the workflows, and you've proven yourself to be dependable, professional, and a team player. That puts you as a top candidate for getting a job at that facility. So how you act today could be the reason you land a job tomorrow. So my clinical site was at a trauma one hospital. Um, so a level one trauma hospital is the highest priority trauma hospital. So any of the big traumas, any of the big car accidents, gunshot wounds, motorcycle accidents, whatever the case, usually go there because they have the most resources to handle these patients. So um, basically, me and a few other classmates, 
who got assigned to this hospital were just kind of thrown into the deep end. And at first, I was nervous. It was super intimidating. And I haven't even been in a hospital setting previously. Like, I had no experience working in a hospital. And then having your first clinical site be at a level one trauma hospital and just walking in and seeing action coming from every direction, patients with these traumatic injuries coming from every direction, I was like, where am I? What did I even get myself into? But honestly, I'm so glad it worked out this way because I had the best experience there and I learned so much from this hospital. So if you are starting school and your clinical site is at a level one trauma center or even a level two or level three, be happy because this is where you get to see all the action. We actually had choices in our program and you could choose from like three or four, maybe even five different clinical sites around you. And my first choice was at a smaller hospital because again, like I said, I had zero prior experience. I I've barely been in hospital settings and I was nervous going in, but um, I did not get my first pick. I got like my third pick, which was the big trauma hop one hospital. And again, like I mentioned, I'm so glad I did because I learned so much there. It was such an incredible experience. And basically what I'm saying is if you do have the choice for your program, go big, go trauma one, because you will become such a well-rounded student once you do graduate and a well-rounded tech. And I'm not saying that the smaller hospitals or the outpatient facilities are bad by any means because they're not. You're still going to get an incredible learning experience there. But at some of the big trauma hospitals, you're going to see very critical patients and you're going to have to learn how to maneuver around them, how to get these positions and these pictures when patients can't move like they normally can. And you get a lot of ambulatory, which just means like walkie-talkie patients and outpatient centers. But um, in the hospital settings, you get patients that can't move at all. So you have to work around and figure out how to get the same pictures that you would as a person that can move their arm and move their body. So it's just a different learning experience. And even if you are at a small hospital to start, you'll most likely be going to different facilities, maybe like in your third or fourth semester or your second year. So you eventually will go to a trauma one and you'll get experience there and you'll go to some smaller facilities and you might go to an outpatient center. Every program again is different, but, um, it's like for me, I started at the trauma one and then I went down to some a smaller facility and then I went to an outpatient center. So if you start at an outpatient center, you might go to a smaller hospital and then you go to a trauma one hospital or something like that. So you'll still get all of the experience that way. But long story short, if your program has a choice, go big, go trauma one. But anyway, I really liked this clinical setting that I was at. I loved the trauma one action. I loved the techs that were there. And I knew that this is where I wanted to work after graduation. So I took my clinicals really seriously. I showed up, I was on time. I showed initiative and treated the clinical setting pretty much like a two-year interview, like I mentioned earlier, and it paid off. By my second year, I was offered a student tech position there. And months before I even graduated, I was offered a full-time job at this facility. And that's why I tell people, if you are smart about it, you can turn your clinical site into your future workplace. Hospitals and clinics are always hiring new grads. So the question is, are you giving them a reason to hire you? All right, so to wrap this video up, if you do these things that we discussed in this video, you will not only thrive in the clinical setting, but you will truly set yourself up for success after graduation. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys got something out of this video and drop a comment. Let me know what you're most nervous about in clinicals, or if you are in clinicals now, what has helped you the most? Every comment or piece of advice helps a future student. So I thank you guys and I will see you in the next one. Take care.